First to the developments in Egypt where there are unverified reports that police are using live bullets and tear gas against the supporters of the ousted President Mohamed Morsi. Again, I should stress these are unconfirmed reports, but we are hearing that dozens of people have been killed. Uh, let's turn live now to Cairo to our Middle East correspondent Paula Sleer. Paula, what more are you hearing on the ground? Well, we're receiving unconfirmed reports that as many as 34 people have been killed and scores more wounded. The military allegedly using tear gas and live bullets to disperse pro-Morsi crowds at both Cairo University and the Presidential Guard. We are receiving this information from tweets being posted by the Muslim Brotherhood and others. The video that we're also looking at is video that is being distributed by the Brotherhood. We haven't yet had a chance to verify the authenticity of this video but right now as we speak the police are chasing protesters we're also receiving reports that there is a very heavy police presence lots of armored vehicles on the ground there is still a media blackout here in Egypt so most of this is not being reported there are some 21 pro Muslim Brotherhood pro Islamist stations that have been shut down and Paula, I'm curious, uh, of course, turmoil over the past week. Any sense that this might escalate or is it calming down? I know there's not a lot of confirmed information at this point, but what's your sense from where you're standing now? No. The sense certainly is that Egypt is on tender hooks, that the situation here is escalating. On Sunday night, you had mass protests, these seeing tens of thousands of both pro and anti Morsi demonstrators taking to the streets. You need to remember that the pro Morsi camp is insisting that they're not stepping down until the former president is reinstated. They want to show that they have numbers and that they have clout, but the anti Morsi camp is also not stepping down. They're insisting that the army make good on its its promises to keep Morsi out of the presidency. There's also a political stalemate. There has been an interim president announced, but he's struggling to announce a vice president. We're being told that this could potentially be Mohamed al baradei the former head of the International Atomic Energy Agency. He's also struggling to head, uh, name a prime minister. So you have a deeply divided country, not only on the street, but also in terms of trying to form a new political entity. And Paula, you're talking about politics here, but there's more to the situation as you've, as you've been reporting than just politics, isn't there? No, there's a lot of play here. Politics is just one element. If anything, the politics is the heart, but the blood that pumps through the heart is economics. When you talk to people on the streets, and this is perhaps the only thing that unifies them, both sides tell you that the situation in Egypt economically is dire indeed. One of the criticisms of Morsi is that although he was in power for one year, he spent most of that year trying to consolidate his grip on power rather than dealing with the very real economic woes that this country has. And so that is why we know that one of the major issues that the new interim government is going to have to deal with is that of economics. RT's other correspondent in Cairo went out to find out exactly what's motivating Morsi's supporters to stand up to the army. I'm here at Cairo University in the capital where thousands of people are protesting in support of the post leader Mohamed Morsi after he was ousted by the military a few days ago. People here say he's the legitimate leader. He was democratically elected and he should only be removed from office through the ballot box at the end of his term. The military for their part said they were acting on the will of the people after nationwide protests calling for the ouster of Mohamed Morsi. Those protesting against Morsi say that he is inept and unable to rule. They blame all the problems in Egypt over the course of the last year on Morsi, saying he's responsible for the failing economy, for the water, fuel and electricity shortages. They say that he's made a lot of controversial decisions and therefore he should not be president. However, the people here maintain that, the, that, that he is a legitimate president and that the only way to get rid of him is through elections. I'm standing here with Ahmed Kamel, who is a protester. He's been protesting over the last few days in support of Morsi. A lot of people are saying that it was a popular will that pushed Mohamed Morsi out of office. What is your reaction to that? Actually, um, first of all, I want to say that I am one of the people who went out in the streets in January 25th to overthrow Mubarak. And we believe that what is happening now is to get Mubarak again in the, in the, the regime of Mubarak. I have participated in five elections among the, the, the last 30 months. And we, we want to, to proceed with a democratic way of ruling this state. And now we are being 
isolated by the military. The military coup is trying to isolate a big portion of the Egyptian population. They, they don't want to hear our voice. They are closing TV, TV stations and they are arresting people without uh, anything. We don't have a constitution that most of the people has approved only six months ago. Well, as tensions are rising across the capital, clashes have broken out at the other pro-Morsi sit-in between members of the security forces and those supporting the deposed leader. People fear that this violence may escalate. However, the protesters standing here behind me say they will not, will not leave until the president is reinstated.